All right, hi everybody. In this video, we're going to learn how to use sprite groups in P5 Play, P5JS. So in this uh, demonstration, I've got a group of five walls or boxes and a man and a target. And in this uh, little game that I'm building here, there will be moving objects added later, uh, but he has to get to the target and then there'll be a new level. So I want the sprites uh, to be removed. So I want the boxes or walls to act all in the same way so i have them belong to a sprite group and sprite groups allow you to manage the collisions the removal or addition of the sprites or to draw them all in the same way so let's take a look at the code i'm just going to bring up the console here I, I printed out the sprite group of the boxes so let's just click this arrow so there's five uh, wall sprites i'm just going to pick one here they're in an array so this is the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. I'm just going to pick one. And it gives you information about that sprite. So the position of sprite 2 is at 212x and 320y. What else here? It gives you the previous position. And as it moves, it gives you the speed. Minus 1 means it's not moving. Later it'll be moving. It gives you the mass. All the information of the sprite can be found in this array. Okay, so let's look at the code. So I declared my global variables, loaded my animations in the preload section, and in the setup function is where the action happens here. So let's make it a little bigger. So in the setup function, wall sprite group. So the first thing you gotta do is name the group. You have to create a new group and name it uh, whatever you want. A good idea is to name it in the plural because there'll be multiple objects in there. So I named it walls and each individual sprite in there, I'm calling a wall. One way to create multiple sprites that are the same uh, is to use a for loop. So I just put four, let j equal zero, j is less than five. So I'm gonna create five sprites, zero, one, two, three, four. And it's gonna loop through here. So I'm using a variable that wall equals create sprite at this X position and Y position, just at random spots on the screen. Uh, I'm adding the animation to each one. Then the animation is actually just one image. In the preload function, it says wall image equals load image and that's the image I want, wall1.png. Instead of add animation, I'm using add image. I have to name the image and then where, what variable that image is stored in the preload function. Now I'm setting the wall sprites to immovable. That means whenever another sprite collides with it, that the wall sprite will not move. It will not move from that X, Y position. And I'm setting the scale of it. So they're all 100 pixels by 100 pixels, but I'm setting the scale of it from 0.4 to 1.2. I'm adding the wall sprite to the walls group. And that's easy as that. So you're just creating multiple sprites that have the same characteristics into one group. Since all the wall sprites belong to the walls group, I'm going to control the walls group rather than each individual wall sprite. So for example, in collision detection, in my collision detection function here, check for collisions function gets called or will run every time the draw function uh, cycles. My player sprite is going to bounce off the walls group. Whenever the player sprite enters one of those wall sprites in the wall group, it will bounce off of it. So I don't have to put every wall sprite in here. I just put the group walls. And when I want to remove the sprites at the end of the level, I don't have to remove every individual sprite. I'm just going to go walls, the walls group dot remove sprites, and that will remove every wall sprite in the walls group. Sprite groups is a much easier way to manage a bunch of sprites that, that act the same way. 